enter the feast. All are invited, the greatest and least. The banquet is ready, now to be shared. Join in the heavenly feast that God has prepared. Around this table we dine as kin, beloved family of God. We share the body of Christ the Lord, so we become what we eat. Gather the people, enter the feast, all are invited, the greatest and least. The banquet is ready, now to be shared. Join in the heavenly feast that God has prepared. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Sisters, brothers, as we gather to share in the feast, living food from heaven, that is prepared by seeking God's pardon and peace. You bring the dead back to life, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You bring the sick back to health, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You reconcile your people to your Father, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who through the grace of adoption chose us to be children of light, grant that we not be wrapped up in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand upright in the bright light of your truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. God did not make death, nor does he rejoice in the destruction of the living. For he fashioned all things that they might have being, and the creatures of the world are wholesome, and there is not a destructive drug among them, nor any domain of the netherworld on earth. For justice is undying, for God formed man to be imperishable. The image of his own nature he made him. But by the envy of the devil, death entered the world, and they who belong to his company experience it. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, as you excel in every respect, in faith, discourse, knowledge, all earnestness, and in the love we have for you, may you excel in this gracious act also. For you know the gracious act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich for your sake, he became poor, so that by his poverty, you might become rich. Not that others should have relief while you are burdened, but that as a matter of equality, your abundance at the present time should supply their needs, so that their abundance may supply your needs, that there may be equality. As it is written, whoever had much did not have more, and whoever had little did not have less. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a large crowd gathered around him, and he stayed close to the sea. One of the synagogue officials named Jairus came forward. Seeing him, he fell at his feet, and pleaded earnestly with him, saying, My daughter is at the point of death. Please come lay your hands on her, that she may get well and live. He went off with him, and a large crowd followed him and pressed upon him. While he was still speaking, people from the synagogue official's house arrived and said, Your daughter has died. Why trouble the teacher any longer? 
Disregarding the message that was reported, Jesus said to the synagogue official, do not be afraid, just have faith. He did not allow anyone to accompany him inside except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they arrived at the house of the synagogue official, he caught sight of a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. So he went in and said to them, why this commotion and weeping? The child is not dead, but asleep. And they ridiculed him. Then he put them all out. He took along the child's father and mother and those who were with him and entered the room where the child was. He took the child by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which means, little girl, I say to you, arise. The girl, a child of 12, arose immediately and walked around. At that, they were utterly astounded. He gave strict orders that no one should know this and said that she should be given something to eat. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, when I was looking for ideas for this homily, I stumbled upon this article from the New York Times titled, Woman Beats COVID Celebrates 105th Birthday. I always like to read articles like this to see what kind of wisdom our elders can impart. As an aside, I know a woman from Nanticoke, Shaytown technically, Mrs. Wilkes, who also celebrated her 105th birthday this year. She was just with us here at St. Nicholas for one of our confirmation masses, and she walked up the steps. Thank you very much. She is a very remarkable woman. Lucia de Klerk is the remarkable woman in the article. She is from New Jersey, a devout Catholic, and the reporter says, ask Lucia de Klerk how she has lived to 105, and she is quick with an answer. Prayer, 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 she offered. And I figured, I, I guess I can buy that, right? Take life one step at a time. Sounds good, so far so good. No junk food. Then she just lost me with that one. She also credits something else for her long life, which she says is also how she beat COVID. The nine gin-soaked golden raisins she has eaten every morning since her teens. It's really simple, she explained. You take nine raisins, put them in a mason jar, let them soak in gin for nine days, and then you eat them. So I was thinking that might be a novena that I could get into. After living 105 years, burying three husbands, and now beating COVID, I imagine that Lucia doesn't fear much anymore. Like last week's gospel, today's gospel also deals with fear. This is another gospel story that is depicted in one of our stained glass windows here at St. Nicholas. If you look at the second one on my left, you're right, the raising of Jairus's daughter. Who knows if that's what the scene really looked like. But Jairus, the synagogue official, was afraid. He came to Jesus with the plea of a desperate father. His daughter is dying. Could Jesus please come and heal her? Jesus left immediately. Now in the longer form of this gospel, Jesus is momentarily delayed when a woman suffering from a hemorrhage touched his cloak and was healed. She was afraid too. When Jesus asks, who touched me? The gospel says that the woman approached him in fear and trembling. When Jesus gets to Jairus's house, there is a horrible, pitiful scene one can only imagine. People weeping and wailing because the girl had died. Jesus, I would think, knew that her death occurred so that people could witness his power. If you remember last week, Jesus showed his power over the wind and the sea. 
And this week, he shows his power over sickness and death. Jesus knew that he was going to heal her. I love the little detail that the gospel says that Jesus put them all out after he ridiculed them. But I think it's what Jesus says to Jairus that is significant. Do not be afraid, just have faith. At home, I have a different Bible translation. And in Luke's version of this story, I printed out what Jesus says on this little card, and I read it from time to time when I need a boost. In that translation, Jesus says to Jairus, fear is useless. What is needed is faith. Fear is useless. What has ever been accomplished through fear? Has fear ever helped a situation, no matter how grave that situation may be? And I don't think that there are many situations that could be worse than the one that Jairus is dealing with. But there are others. A man or woman is considering getting serious about a new bow, but he or she is afraid of getting hurt again. So the opportunity to find the love of their lives is rejected. A student has an idea of what they want to do in life, but it's a very difficult major, and he or she is afraid of not succeeding in the classes. So a great nurse or doctor or engineer never comes into existence. So much is lost because of fear. Fear is useless, Jesus says. What is needed is faith. Fear destroys faith. When we have faith, we know that no matter what the outcome of a situation may be in this world, there is always more to it than our human understanding can grasp. If we have faith, we know that even if a situation doesn't work out, a job, a relationship, a class, we will still be the better person for having given it a shot. The old saying, it's better to have loved and lost than never have loved at all, is true. People enter into marriage. Men become priests or deacons. Women become sisters. People take new jobs because they have faith that God is leading them in a direction that will turn out positive in the long run, no matter how disappointing or failed the immediate results may seem. We must have faith in God to guide us and not to be held hostage by fear. Nothing good flows from fear. Fear is an instrument of the devil, tempting us to give up on God and his goodness. We can easily fall prey to the one who wants to use our fear against us. The devil wants us to give up on God, to not trust God. The devil knows he can't attack God but he can attack us, especially our trust, and he does this through our fears. In 2 Timothy, we hear, God did not give us a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power and love and self-control. The opposite of fear is courage. The word courage comes from the Latin word for heart, core, and the Latin word for action, acta. Courage is the action of a heart that has faith, the trust in God, the trust that the outcome will eventually be for our benefit. This gospel points out that the greatest fear we all confront is the fear of dying, the fear of dying ourselves or the fear of having a loved one die. We know that none of us will get out of this world alive, but we still fear death. The world tries to get us to think that all is lost when we die, that it's all over. But we know that if we keep our minds focused on heaven, if we reject the fear and trust in the Lord, if we have faith, then afterwards we will enjoy the place, the mansion, that Jesus says he is going to prepare for us and our loved ones. Jonathan David and Melissa Helzer have an evangelical song on their album, We Will Not Be Shaken, that includes the lyrics, I am no longer a slave to my fear. I am a child of God. You split the sea so I could walk through it. You drown my fear with your love. You rescue me so I can stand and say, I am a child of God. From the decisions that we make in life to the very end of our physical life itself, fear is useless. What we need, like Jairus, 
is to have faith. Amen. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. For all those afflicted in body, mind, or spirit, May they know the healing touch of Jesus, the divine healer, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have seen us through the long days of pandemic, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Mark Joshua DeSellis, ordained a priest of the Lord Jesus this weekend, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the safety of all summer travelers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially Ruth Gallus and Willie Miller, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For our own personal needs, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. And let us pray for those who were lost in the disaster in Florida, for those still missing, for anxious, family and friends, for rescue workers, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear, our hear the prayers of your church, O loving God, for they are offered through Christ our Lord.
Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive honor and glory. Worthy are the ones who believe to receive the goodness of God. Friends, pray now that our sacrifice will be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. O God, you who graciously accomplish the effects of your mysteries, grant that the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of these sacred gifts. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God. For though you have no need of our praise, our thanksgiving is itself your gift. Since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but rather profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so, in company with all the angels and saints, we praise you, and with great joy, we proclaim. Holy, holy, holy. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, the supper ended. He took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O oh Lord, until you come again. And therefore. 
for as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection. We offer you, Lord God, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church scattered throughout the earth and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Pope Francis, with our Bishop Joseph, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with her beloved husband Joseph, with the apostles, with St. Nicholas, with Blessed Pauline, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. 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 At our Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and be safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, For the kingdom the, the power, power, and the glory are yours now, now and forever. forever. Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord's peace be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word, my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May the divine sacrifice we have offered and received fill us with new life, O Lord, so that bound to you in lasting charity, we may bear fruit that will last forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. As always, I hope you'll take a bulletin or click on. The uh, bountiful baskets are still out here in the backyard. We hope you'll support that. A uh, couple of other things I hope you'll read about. Uh, we have a new, along with Father Fidel, we have another assistant coming, Mark DeSells. He was ordained yesterday. He is young. He's under 40. Mm -hmm. Young, okay. And from what I hear, we are going to be very blessed with this new priest and his presence here with us. So I hope you'll keep Mark and his family in your thoughts and prayers. Uh, before eight o'clock mass, I was kibitzing with a guy out front and he said, well, I hear we have a new priest. I said, oh yeah, yeah. And, he's, and I said, uh, and I hear he gives really good homilies. And the guy said, you know what? I never cared much for homilies. I said, well, okay. I said, well, then you know what? I said, the next Sunday is going to be your day. 
because guess what? We're putting the hymn books back in the pews and you'll be able to sing. He said, I'm going to go to St. Al's. I said, okay. It was all said in good fun. No animosity at all. But we are, we're on the brink of getting back. If you think about it, we, we were reminded of Mark's diaconate ordination last year. And I think there were only like 40 people allowed. He had to wear a mask. His family, the bishop for ordination, people, very few people in the cathedral. But if you tuned in to ordination yesterday, oh, what a difference. Uh, well, just think about where we were last year, too. And, uh, you know, when we think, uh, you know, da, 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 just remember what we've come through. And let's, let's remember and be thankful that we are where we are today. A uh, couple people have asked, how's the linking, the linking going with our friends from Our Lady of Fatima? Well, we're talking, talking, figuring, questioning. We're not sure yet. Um, I think when Father Giselles gets here and we link up officially the end of July, I think our first goal will be to make sure that when a mass is scheduled, one of us will show up, okay? <laughs> If we can accomplish that for a couple of weeks, we will be on good ground. Uh, it struck me, you know, we were talking about weekday mass, and so, you know, when a loved one uh, passes, we have the funeral mass. Well, now we have to be mindful of our friends up the street, too. So when someone from that parish passes on, there'll be funerals up there, so we're going to have to juggle a little bit. And like I said, uh, you know, Father DeSales, he'll be uh, wondering what key opens what door, let alone anything else. So we're just going to take it nice and easy. Um, you may have a lot of questions, and I don't have a lot of answers, but it will all work out in God's good time. Okay, but we'll, we'll keep you all posted. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May God bless you, Father and Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. by faith and not by sight, no gracious words we hear of him who spoke as none has spoke, but we believe him near. We may not touch his hands and side, nor follow where he trod, yet in his promise we rejoice and cry, my Lord.